Hi, I'm Tiffany. Thanks for joining us today for The Sit Show. This video is gonna talk about leash handling. We just wanna take our dog for a nice walk. And in this video, we're gonna discuss how simply just moving or letting the leash go a little bit instead of pulling on your dog can make the difference in an enjoyable walk for both you and your dog. If you clicked on this video, chances are you would like to have better control of your dog and you are finding that you're constantly restraining your dog. And what that can look like is you find that your hand is sliding down that leash and you're trying to hold the dog back and the dog is trying to go forward or outwards or something. And if you have a big dog, your wrist is gonna hurt, your hand is gonna hurt, your shoulder is gonna hurt. Or maybe you're one of those people, you're wrapping that leash around your hand to prevent your dog from getting into trouble that he or she should not be getting into. If you are, I want you to consider something. Restraint causes frustration in the dog. By pulling back on the dog and restricting the dog constantly, frustration of the dog is building to get to that thing that they're being held back from. The other thing that could be happening with you is you might be having the dog where they have that full six feet of leash and you're walking them like this or you're walking them like this and they're zigging back and forth. So those are just a couple of examples, but typically what I see with people when they're having leash problems with their dog is they're wrapping the leash up, the dog is constantly restrained, or they're just walking the dog straight ahead of them like that. If you're okay with that, you don't need to watch. But if you'd like to change that, I've got some ideas for you. We all just want to be comfortable, us, the dog, right? When we're going for a walk together, when we're going in locations together, I don't want my dog to be pulling on me. I don't want to be pulling on my dog because that constant pressure is just gonna cause problems. If you have a six foot leash on your dog, I want you to consider rather than trying to pull the dog back on the leash or restrain the dog, go the other way before the leash gets tight. We have six feet here. So rather than me wrapping it up around my hand and hurting my hand, I can simply, if my dog was here and he starts to go that way, I can just let go of all the leash except the handle and just move away. Just move away. That's what I'm asking you to try for about three to four days to see if you can make a difference. Now, there's another side of that. A lot of our dogs are fast and this six feet runs out before we know it. It's gone, right? So if, if my dog is here, he's just gonna zig that way and now my whole body is getting rocked by that dog. This is where I go against the school of thought of getting a shorter leash. Because if my dog is already pulling on a six foot leash and I think the pulling is gonna be better on a two foot leash, it's actually the opposite of what many people would tell you to do. That's where I'm going to, and I do this with Every dog that trains with me, every dog that starts with me, I start them on a 15 foot line. So this is a 15 foot long line. When I am working a dog, I don't do this on a public sidewalk. I go to a field someplace where there's nothing else around just so the dog and I can start to mesh together on this. This line gives me more timing. Think about driving on a four lane expressway. There is a lot going on and you have a lot of decisions to make. Whereas driving down a residential road is easier. So that that's my analogy of how to work this. So if I have a dog that likes to pull or I've just been pulling the dog around, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give the dog more leash. And when that dog starts heading off in that direction, I'm just going to, before the line is tight, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna walk away from the dog. So is the dog gonna hit the end of the line? At some point they probably are but rather than it being a tug of war here, the dog will start, they will start to learn how to keep the line loose and stay with you. When I do this, I'm gonna walk you through a pattern of how to do it. So it's easy for you to stick to it and it's easy for the dog. Dogs are pattern trained. If you've ever taught a puppy how to sit, 
and then a puppy how to lay down, and especially if you're using treats, that puppy's gonna sit, and then before you might even do anything with a hand lure or the word, the puppy lays down because they're like, I know what's next, I know what's next. So I've got a little triangle section in here set up for video purposes, but ideally I would do this outside someplace in a big open area. I like to do it on grass, you could also just pick a parking lot and you could just make a straight line out of it too. So I'm going to explain what that looks like. All right, so for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use Matt and uh, Fizz here. And I'm gonna have him do the same thing of going to cones and stopping at cones. That's it. If I give Matt a brand new vehicle and he's never driven it before, the car's not gonna drive itself. He has to know what he's doing. And that's the thing with these dogs is, Yes, that training can help immensely, but if the person doesn't understand how to handle the dog, if the person doesn't have a relationship with the dog, the dog is not going to do the same thing. There's going to be discrepancies there. So I'm just gonna walk over here and you walk away from wherever he's coming towards me. Just move off. and stop. And move to that cone. And stop. Go to the cone to your right. Go back to the cone over there. Keep going. <laughs> Stop. So where Matt is at right now, there is food in the corner in a bowl, and it's pretty far back. But you'll see the difference with Fizz with Matt versus Fizz with me. And Fizz isn't being naughty by any means. He just doesn't have the same understanding with Matt. And that's where when you're training the dog, again, it comes back to the consistency, especially if there's multiple people involved, where one person might do it this way and then this person does it this way, that's really hard for the dog, right? So this simple thing of just holding the leash, keeping it loose and just walking off and moving away, if you can just keep those things in your head, that makes it easier for the dog to pick up. But you have to be thoughtful of your environment where you're working and the level of distraction too, because if I am thoughtful with Fizz, and don't overwhelm him and make sure things are far enough away. And then Matt is my other training partner with his dog and he decides to take him to the pet store and it's too much for Fizz and goes back to wrapping that leash up around his hand. It's going to produce problems with me on the other side when I'm trying to do the right thing. That's the way it works. So the consistency in it is really critical and that it's being done with the dog on a repetitive basis every day, two to three times a day for 10, 15 minutes. It could even be a half an hour if it's nice weather and the dog has a lot of go to it. We have to consider the dog's age and activity level. We have to consider the environment we're in. It's cold here right now in Minnesota. I don't even know what the temp is today. It's 40 degrees. To me, that's like one degree and I'm cold and I don't wanna work outside. Whereas if it was 75 degrees outside, Fizz and I might be able to do that for a half an hour. That repetition of again and again and just making stops along the way and then going and then making a stop. Is that dog stopping with you? If, he, if you stop and he just keeps going, just turn and go the other way before the line gets tight. But it's before the line gets tight so it doesn't turn into a pull. If I'm the dog with Matt right now and Matt starts to walk towards this cone and I'm just trucking ahead, just keep, just keep walking, stop. And now I'm doing this. Can you feel the tension, Matt? Yeah. Okay, turn and walk off. 
So I'm naturally just going to pull against them because I've already planted. Whereas, we're going to start going in this direction. Walk off. I'm going to get ahead of you. Turn and go the other way. Go. That, just that little shift in momentum, I'm more likely as the dog to turn and go with him. If I've already hit the end of the leash and I'm digging, Matt's stronger than I am, right? So, and he's the handler right now. So hold on, we'll switch it. So now you're the dog, okay? Come over here with me. Hold on, because I'm your handler. <laughs> Start walking towards that cone. So he's untrained, right? And he's gonna keep going to that food because he wants to check it out. He wants to check that food out real bad, real bad, right? So I'm just sitting here and now I'm resisting and I'm going to pull him away from the food, right? He's got all this momentum and drive <laughs> to get to that food. It makes it really hard for me. And that's what a lot of us do on our leashes with our dogs. Whereas he's going to that food bowl now I turned before the line got tight, and it was far enough away so that it was this quick little, little interruption rather than this drag and this pull. And that's what's happening with people with their dogs on the leash. Six foot, 15 foot, it doesn't matter. Once that drag is there, that pull is there, the dog's gonna dig. That's just natural behavior. We just dig. And it's creating sore arms and people getting tipped over, coughing, gagging. You've heard it when the dog is pulling. It doesn't matter what the collar is. It could be a flat buckle collar. If they're constantly pulling on that collar, it's going to irritate their neck and their throat.